to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're uh, going to have a really uh, tough, gritty, challenging conversation today. Uh, we're talking with Steve Picorni, who's uh, part two of our conversation with him on how to overcome pornography. Uh, you know, winter came early this year. It came in, it came somewhere around the middle of the summer with the knowledge that some of our cardinals and bishops and, even, and priests had let us down, that uh, there's been predatory behavior uh, going on, and it hasn't been dealt with properly. I just got back from the Napa Institute meeting in Washington, D.C., where we really uh, went deep into these issues. And we're challenging our priests uh, to remain celibate. It turns out that a large percentage of priests are not celibate, and the largest percentage of those that are not celibate are priests that are acting out in homosexual, homosexual ways. Uh, and we need to ask our priests to be celibate. We need to ask them to probably retake their vows of celibacy, recommit to it, and if they cannot, then we need to ask them to resign. We can no longer have a mortal sin uh, being acquiesced to uh, among, our, among our priests, our bishops, and our cardinals. We're asking of them sexual purity. Uh, but if we're going to ask them to do that, if we're going to ask for purity uh, among our 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 clerics, our priests, bishops, cardinals, and pope, then we need to be, we also need to honor our bodies, and we also need to do our part in that. And I really think that the laity is in a place now where we are going to uh, be asked to take the log out of our own eyes so that we can take the splinter out of our neighbor's eye. We really do need to work to take the splinter out of the eye of what's been going on with our, our, our clerics. We really do need to do that work. It's, it's kind of like up to the laity now to make that, that movement. And so we're, we're, uh, we're not able to do that, though, unless we take the log out of our own eyes. So we have Steve Picorni on. The good news is that Jesus said these words, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus also said words like, let there be light. You know, let there be, uh, let, you know, he, he, his, his word is creative. Uh, the Decalogue is ten words, the commandments of Moses. But we know the Catechism tells us that God the Father has only spoken one word, and that word is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. And when Jesus says, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect, he means it. But he means it as a commandment, but also as a creative statement. Just like when he said, let there be light. God, Jesus is speaking life and grace and mercy into your hearts. And so those who are ch being challenged with pornography, and frankly, I think every man is having to battle that. Maybe you're, you know, you're, you're probably being successful and you're not falling to it, but it's on the attack. I show my wife, Cindy, at least once or twice a week, someone on Facebook wants to be my friend, and trust me, she doesn't want to be my friend. And I'll show her that, that, that message, that, and, I'll, and I'll block that and I'll block that person. Satan is on the attack, and what he really hates is manly men. He really hates men of virtue. And he's, gonna try, he's trying to take us down, and one of the key ways he's taking us down is through his full-on attack with pornography. So we have Steve Picorni on for part two of our, part two of our conversation. His book, Redeemed Vision, uh, gives us the background uh, in uh, the challenge of pornography and also how to attack it. If you want to hear our first part, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. Uh, we had him on the show just a few weeks ago and listen to kind of like the why and the how of it. But Steve Picorni is here to tell us how to win. And trust me, you will win. You will be victorious because God is on your side. And when you're weak, then you are strong. So in this weak time, maybe some of you are experiencing man up, step up. Good news is here. Jesus is speaking the word of, of, the, of, of creative power into your life with mercy and grace. And Steve's going to give us some practical ways on how to deal with that. Steve, 
Picorni, we're so grateful for your very challenging and difficult ministry. Thank you so much. An honor, brother, an honor. And I want to thank you for your words, especially with these very difficult times in the church uh, that we're dealing with. And especially, you know, you, you mentioned the, the failure of, of our clergy, some of our clergy, right, of living out their vows. And I, as you're speaking this, it comes to mind here, and it's going to connect with our conversation on pornography. Um, you know, I, I connect it to our American democracy, where, you know, we complain about our legislators and the president and, and whoever, right, is is going to be leading us in, in the political realm. Well, in the American society, right, where do they come from? They come from us. And so if we look in the same way, you know, or a similar way, where do these priests, where do these bishops and, and cardinals come from? They come from the family. That's where there's obviously everybody comes from some sort of family. But most of us have either um, never heard the good news of, about the body or the or have failed to live this out it's not been taught to us and as is described the the subtitle to my book of redeemed vision is setting the blind free from the pornified culture we're living in this culture that is keeping us blind it's it's encouraging us to use other people as a means of a self, sexual selfish sexual gratification and it's everywhere in many ways and uh, many Catholics have simply accepted this as this is the norm and this is just the way life is. And we can simply, all, all we have hope to do are if we, if we narrow our gaze on that whole topic of the pornify culture of, of with pornography itself, um, all we have hope for are coping mechanisms. And I think we've, we've heard them all. Um, I, you know, stop looking at it. That's one of my favorite ones, you know, and if anybody knows about the brain chemicals, um, we can't do it on our own willpower or get a preventative measure, get a, a filter on your computer. If you are a smart enough guy, um, you can find a way around it. I know uh, from both personal, I've done it myself, and also the many clients that share that they can find a way around those in my work with freedom coaching. Um, you have pray the rosary, go to confession, go to, uh, receive the sacraments, uh, they receive the Eucharist. All those are good in themselves, but if we've got a serious spiritual attachment, right, that is especially affecting us in our brains, then um, many of those things become what a good friend of mine described as sacramental viciousness. We're going, for instance, we're going to confession week after week, confessing this over and over and over. And I think there's there's something very good to that practice. If somebody's doing that, if they need to do that, do that. Okay, so I want to make that very clear to our listeners and those who are watching this. But many times it's 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 this. We're simply we feel like we're simply going round and round and not making any progress in that area. And so many people are asking, okay, how do I actually bring this to a close? And so this is what I'm, I, I want to want to jump in with you. And so um, I want to do that to illustrate a, a story. Um, and this is, I talk about this in my book and it's a nine year old boy. When he was nine, he was at a park with his family and his, um, he found a quote unquote gentleman's club ad. Now, whether it was a gentleman's what, true nature of gentlemen, I would say not, but it was two naked women on this advertisement. He didn't touch it. He went to his older sister immediately and said, I found a yucky picture. The older sister says, go talk to your older brother. He does. And the older brother says, go ahead and show it to me. So we are bring me to it. And so the younger brother does. And the older brother takes it, immediately rips it up and throws it away. And this bears, this is no pun intended. This bears two questions here. Um, first question is, how did that younger brother immediately go to his older sister and do and say it was a yucky picture? And, and B, how did the older brother immediately go and rip it up and throw it away? Because Barry, in a vast majority of, ex, of experience, of, uh, of guys especially, um, if we were to encounter one of those images, what do we typically do with it? Well, it's usually not, you usually don't have a strong enough family where you can go and say, this has happened and how do I deal with it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And typically what we would do, what's been the experience is we hide it. It's I, like we just won the, right? We won the lottery. And this is my buried treasure. Treasure. We become Gollum, right? My precious, and I want to swallow this thing whole. And what is the reason for that, Bear? The reason is because our whole experience of growing up, our our first encounter and continuing encounters with the body, are 
through the lens of pornography, that our experience of especially the naked human body is that the body itself is eroticized, that this is the only way we can view the body, and, there, and there's no other way that's out there. And if we've been programmed in this way, and we've never been shown that there's another way to see the body as what God has, has designed us in how to see the body, then we're going to fall for the counterfeit. And as everybody who has an attachment to pornography can, can speak from, the guilt and shame go so deep. We but know we gotta, it does not satisfy us. But we're going to win this war. We're going to win this battle. We're talking with Steve Picorni. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Steve, what website can they go to? What's the best place for them to find you? Yeah, freedom-coaching.net. In the name of your book, Redeemed Division, by Steve Picorni, uh, you can find on Amazon? That's correct. Is that right? Okay. Um, we're going to win this battle. This is the, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit is moving in the church to, clear, to cleanse the church. The, the, John the Baptist said, Jesus will come and he will thoroughly purge his floor. Uh, so there's going to be a purification of the, the, this disorder uh, of the beautiful desire that God gives us for sexual uh, union. And uh, we're gonna, but the Holy Spirit's coming about to cleanse that and purify that. Go to our website, bearwasnick.com. Men, join Bear's Man Cave. You can only join it by going to the website, deepadventure.com, and then we will give you a secret access to our, our Facebook page. And uh, we, we, the men challenge each other in every way, in every area of their lives. And we have a, uh, every two or three weeks, we have a Bear's Man Cave Zoom video chat meetup, which is pretty cool. We, we all get together, we pray together, we go through one of my books together, and it's just a great way to build community all across the world. So please join us there. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you know what? If you would like to, you can go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, and you can uh, subscribe. And we'd really love it if you do, because as soon as we get, I think, about three or 400 more new members, subscribers, uh, YouTube is going to blow us up, and we really need that to happen. And so what we want to say is go there, and you can see Steve and I uh, actually talking. And uh, you can, it's, it's kind of cool when you want to share this conversation with your, with your friends or family. If you go to our, if you go to our um, YouTube site, you can share it. And uh, it shares it in a way that people, you know, they want to see, you know, uh, rather than just listen. Uh, but it's also available on almost all the podcast apps. And if you go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, uh, we will send it out to you every week. We send out the show, actually, before it airs. So we'd welcome you to do that. Today we're talking with Steve Picorni, and we're talking about a disordered, uh, the disorder of, uh, of this desire that pornography uh, poisons us with. I just remember when I was a kid, uh, you were describing it earlier, Steve, I was probably... I mean, actually, I know this sounds really naive, but I had no idea how babies were made until I was in eighth grade. That's the generation I came from, you know. And, there you go. And I was a virgin. Yep. I was a virgin. The on the night, And I was a virgin on the night I was married. Um, but I do remember going to a cousin's house and finding him, my uncle's little stash someplace, and it was like fool's gold. You know, it looked like the real thing. This is this is what a woman's body looked like, and enticed me, and it excited me. But it's like Diamond Head, uh, the, the beautiful uh, cinder cone of, from the volcano in Waikiki near my house. They call it Diamond Head because uh, men, went, Howley's men, white men went up there and they found some form of quartz and they thought it was gold. And so, I mean, diamonds. So they called it Diamond Head. It was fool's diamond. It wasn't real. It was fake. And I know that one of the things John Paul II said in his theology of the body is the problem with pornography isn't that it shows so much, it's that it shows too little. It doesn't show the heart and soul and the beauty of the person, for example, when you see the beautiful sculpture of King David. So we're, we're defining, everyone knows what pornography is. It's hard to define, but everybody knows what it is. And then once it gets into your soul, there's this shame that comes with it. And, uh, you know, Satan is so cool. He's so smart, right? He tempts, tempts, tempts. And then when we fall, he accuses, accuses, accuses. He's the great tempter and the great accuser. Don't get caught in that circle. But um, I think almost every man that I know has had to, at some point in their life, uh, fight this off. And win, and win victory over it, uh, whether it was early on in their lives or, I mean, like walking along the beach, I'm a surfer. I mean, I have to have a covenant with my eyes. I have to avert my gaze. It's like they say, the first look is free. You know, you see something and then you kind of look at the waves instead. You know, you, you have to have a discipline, that, that, that gift of self-mastery. 
how do we win this battle, Steve? How do the men listening right now that are determined? Sure. You know, the thing is, if you're in a battle and you're losing, at least you're battling. And now we're going to give you the tools and the, and the, and the method to help you, uh, the, the, uh, the weapons to help you win that. Sure. And I would say, uh, obviously, there's, there's many things that go in here. And as we we're talking in our last segment, you know, there's lots of different coping mechanisms, you know, how we can try to just kind of white knuckle how to how to how to go through this. But really what what I want to propose to those who are listening to this is the goal is not simply fighting against pornography. The goal here is about inoculating us from pornified images. Okay. Certainly this is, you know, with the, with the advent of the internet, this is distributed in many, many ways. Um, and, and certainly I think this is pushing our faces more than has ever been in the history of humanity. Um, that is true, but this does not mean that we are inevitable to fall to this because men he, hear me clearly on this. We were designed to see, we were designed to see with our eyes. So it is one thing to be said that there is something to be said about learning to have custody of the eyes, right? And, and many of us, when we interpret that, lo- that notion, is to merely look away, okay? And if a person is at that point and that their, their, their heart has been, you know, they're really struggling with lust in their heart, and they think that's the only thing they can do to really, in, you know, to not sin, then please look away, but we must not think that that is the fullness of, of freedom because we were created to see. So, I mean, let me pose the question, right? Well if a woman even were, right, if, if a woman were dressed to kill, right, Try, meaning trying to evoke our lust or that uh, we're driving in our car and we see that Bud Light ad, right, of that uh, woman in the bikini that is is not is is certainly not just in a bikini, but is trying to evoke lust. The question is, can we still look at her as a person? Can we see her because as Jesus? As in God many cases, her. yeah. Amen, amen. And I'm going to say yes, but here's the point, Bear. In many cases, in 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 the, especially the Christian church and in, in some Catholic circles, the notion is if a man sins, it's a woman's fault. Okay. It's her fault if she and this echoes back to this echoes back to Eden. If she, if you didn't give me this woman, if she wouldn't dress this way, I wouldn't have to lust. And it's the same thing that Jesus is pointing back to in Matthew 5, 27, 28, where he's, he's saying, you've heard it said you should not commit adultery. But I say to you, if you even look with lust at that woman, you've already committed adultery in your heart. He's not saying and this is what a lot of us hear. We hear, don't look at women. That's not the truth at all. The truth of it is we're not to look with lust. But most of us, when we feel this, because all we've been fed is when we encounter images we are taught to believe that any sort of attraction means lust. And no, we are never called to lust. It is always improper. It is always degrading. It is always beneath our dignity and those we're seeing. But regardless of how a person is dressed or how they're presented, we can see them with love. Absolutely. And how do we do that? Absolutely. By entering into beauty. Go ahead. Entering into what? Enter into beauty. And Amen. so here's here's one one of the secrets we need one of the secrets that we need to do is that there's been we've bought wholesale as as a, a Christian church. If we look back to what the sixteen hundreds and, and beforehand, the Catholic Church was the patron of the arts. We were the ones that brought about this, and our artists were formed first and foremost, and you said this earlier, in virtue. As men, the devil hates virtue. It must be a forming of virtue exteriorly of what our actions are doing, also in our hearts, so that we are really men of integrity, so that we're doing what we're supposed to do when no one's watching. So that virtue in the artist was very present. The Protestant uh, Reformation comes in and in many cases tears out statues, tears artwork out of our our churches. And many of us in the way we carry carry our our, our life as Catholics, we are Protestant in the way we are treating images. We want to run away from them. Instead, what we need is an exploration and a diving into genuine beauty. And I love to point people to first and foremost in this whole thing is to St. Thomas Aquinas's definition on beauty and his, his exploration into beauty. And very briefly, 
three elements that are must be there for beauty. There must be um, radiance, meaning anything that's beautiful is going to radiate from God. There must be due proportion or balance that what is presented in that image is striving to correspond with what is actually in reality. And then also third is wholeness, that the fullness as much as is possible in that image to capture everything that's in there. And if we take the, if we are programmed by those things as a starting point, then what we can do is take that education and compare it to any image that we see. So when we see here, pornography fails wholesale on all three of those because God's love is never about using a person. The love that we see between a husband and wife is a little glimmer of what happens between a bridegroom and the bride, meaning the, uh, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, and the church. And what happens to pornography does not radiate that. Second is that of balance. What happens in pornography? They're actors. The, uh, pornogra- the reason why we never view the marital act of intercourse is that it's too intimate. There's too much intimacy that's gone in there, the building up of that. And especially that if we were to have that, even a married couple on a, on a, on a, on a movie um, doing that kind of action, it's a moment in time. There's no way you can capture what's going on there. And because it's not what actually happens in that act, it's not real. And that's, so there's no balance between reality. And third with wholeness, most of these videos, right, they're not absolutely can't capture the whole relationship, but it's simply focusing on body parts. And to my brothers and to some of my sisters, because I, I work with women as well who are dealing with this, um, mere body parts will not get us what we're looking for. What we're looking for is genuine intimacy where we can see and be seen to love and be loved. And it's going to be beauty that's going to unlock that entire mystery for us. And beauty is, is, is well, as Dr. Robert Spitzer said, is one of the five uh, yearnings of our heart that draw us to the Lord. And, you know, I, I have to say I have this delight. If I, if, two things. If, I, if I'm walking along and I see a very beautiful woman, I'll go, Lord, you did good there. That was, that's a beautiful woman. You know, but it, to me it points yeah. to the majesty of the Lord. However, being a beautiful woman can be a real cross to bear because then people start focusing on that or you f- start focusing on that and you forget about the inner beauty. Actually, when I, I say there's, two, there's, there's a pretty woman, but then there's a beautiful woman, those are two different things. And I know women that are, have, have been not, not been graced with beauty. Uh, just, you know, just, just um, I'm sorry, they're just, they're just not, you know. But with being pretty. Uh, and I look at them and I go, I wonder what great beauty God is forming in her, this woman and what she will look like when I see her in heaven. You know, I, I like this beautiful inner uh, life that's growing within her because of the suffering she may feel because she doesn't look pretty to the outside world. And yet beauty is definitely from within. And so uh, we're talking with our good friend Steve Picorni about how to, what the nature of photography is and how to root it out at the deepest level. This is Bear Wozniak, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, to find out more. We'll be right back. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've kind of been neglecting, uh, reminding everyone that we're going to be going to, to uh, Greece uh, in May. Cindy and I are taking a pilgrimage there to, to walk in the footsteps of St. Paul. We're going to go to Ephesus, to Corinth, to Thessalonica. We're going to go to um, the island of Patmos, by the way, where John had his vision. We're just going to, and we're going by boat for part of it, because part of it you can only get there by boat, and we're going to end up in Cindy's and my uh, favorite island where we were, we were betrothed on the island of Santorini. And so uh, we're looking forward to taking you. And so go to our website, deepadventure.com, click on Greece Pilgrimage and jo- join us there. It's a great time for, for grandmothers to uh, bring their grandchildren and, and, their, and, their, uh, and their children on this trip. It's just and grand- grandparents to do that. So we'd invite you to do that. We're talking with Steve Picorni on a very vital subject. Today the church is facing sexual scandal. We see it in the uh, we see it in different ways. We see uh, in the priesthood we're finding out that a large percentage of priests I don't know what the statistics are, but it may be but it's a lot higher than you would think are sexually active, and most of those that are sexually active are involved in homosexual acts. And we're asking our priests to I'm, ba- I'm basically challenging them if you can't overcome your problem with celibacy, uh, even though you may really want to and you're not able to, you need to resign. Um, but we can't really say that if we as a laity are not, being, uh, uh, not living a pure life too. And I look at 
the I look at the Catholic Church and I look at all the couples that are uh, that have two children, and I'm wondering are they being true to the contraceptive uh, teachings of the church? Are they are they using natural family planning or are they contraceptive? How can you say to a priest to be to be pure if you're not uh, walking in the wholeness of the faith in that area? But I think the biggest challenge that we have is this insidious uh, invasion of pornography that leads people into terrible detours. I know a lot of, uh, I was listening to Mark Hoke from the Kingsmen uh, speaking how usually eventually pornography leads into great perversion, uh, even into child, um, child um, attraction. I don't know what they call it, ped a pedophilia type uh, uh, attraction. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just remember uh, being, uh, when we were be be in front of the, uh, the five brothels in Houston, and we were praying the rosary as Long Ride Home drove through Houston, and we joined with the Catholic Charismatic Center praying there. And, and uh, you know, now two of those five brothels are closed. Uh, but as we were praying, at one point a woman stuck her head out the window and then was pulled back in, uh, out the door and then was pulled back in, and the enforcer and the pimp showed up, and we just kept praying. Do you realize what a horrible thing you do to a woman when you objectify her like that, when you look at her with lust like that? Um, I don't know how they got trapped into that or if they willingly went into that, but it's a horrible, degrading thing that you're doing to that woman. And I, I, I always think about that image of that very brief moment when this woman stuck her head out the window and waved at us with a quick smile and then was pulled back in. And I wonder how many of these women, Steve, that are involved in this pornographic um, industry are there unwillingly or, or 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 caught in some sort of economic uh challenge or what but uh so many of them are victims themselves and how can you look at look at someone to objectify her and to use her body in that way in pornography and here she's she's struggling she's suffering even if she's willingly involved in it it comes out of a place of suffering it doesn't come out of a place usually of a, a good place so can you talk to us about having uh, this area of having compassion on the uh, on the woman or person that we're objectifying when we when we're involved with pornography? Oh yeah. Well, let's go back to the beginning, right? Every human being, every man and woman is created with in inalienable dignity, right? We are not the sum total as John Paul would say, not the sum total of our mistakes and failing, we are the sum total of our father's love for us. Praise and God. so these women Right. And men and men also remember, we oftentimes we, we look at pornography and in, 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 in porn, pornified videos. Right. That they're in order for the women to participate in those acts. There's got to be a man if there's man and woman actions. Um, and they are also trapped in this cycle. And I, I would point um, I would point actually viewers head over to and I, I'm, not, I'm not affiliated affiliated with this organization, but O.U.R. Film dot org Operation Underground Railroad. Um, they've got a series of six films. You enter your email address in there. This goes all into the sex trade trafficking um, that goes on there. And we have to ask, why does this happen? Nobody wakes up one day saying or grows up says no i hope i can wake up and uh, i hope when i grow up i can i can hurt children nobody wants to do that why does why is this happening the same thing and i'll answer that question in a second the same thing with some of the priests right and I, it's a very small amount but it is significant um who have gone and hurt children or acting in predatory or, or, or behavior. Acting, the biggest challenge we have now the biggest challenge we have now with with priests and, and bishops are uh priests on young adults you know they're 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 they're, fair, they're yep. been yep. scared off from the from the children, but the young adults that are in seminary, so they're still in a vulnerable age in their life. So that's predatory too. Absolutely, absolutely. No, it's it's a, a vast majority. Of, based on the John Jay report of two thousand four, it was eighty one over eighty one percent are involved in, with post uh, where abuse happens. It's post pubescent males, which means this is not a child thing, but a but in a but a male but a but same sex predatorial behavior. Why is this going on? We have a disorder of our heart, and I I would humbly propose that they are blind. And this is exact. And, and all these things, when you look, go behind the 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 veil of the of of those actions, they have been trained by pornified images, by pornified vi videos, right? That is has kept them from really seeing. And go back to your original thought here on this segment, right? These are true beloved daughters of God, and we are called to see them with love regardless of how they are addressing, regardless of how they're acting. And when we can truly see them as persons, what happens is 
we the des- there is not a desire to want to lust, but actually it's a complete different opposite. We have this sadness that comes in, the sadness of realizing that something so beautiful that's that's so uh, unique and unrepeatable is being uh, being tr- uh, tainted here. And one point of thought I want to give to our to those who are listening and watching this: um, if you've ever been to Amish country. Um, and there's Amish country, they have horse and buggies and they have, um, they're riding horses. There's horses there. When the horses have to go, there's a, uh, they, they release what we call road apples. And I often will ask people this, have you ever had a desire to go and pick up one of those road apples and eat it? No, we would never want to do that because, um, because it's crap, literally. Uh, we would never want to do that. So then flip it around in the same vein here. What we are seeing in pornography literally is that it is garbage. It will never satisfy us. But the question is, can you see it as the evil that it is? And if you cannot, if there is an attraction to lust, then we know there's work that has to be done to transform our heart. So we need to learn how, and coming to Christ, learning how to see through beauty, that we're able to break that attraction forever. And it's a total difference in our life. It makes a total difference. What's step one, step two, step three? Do you have a process uh, that, that you bring men through? And then when you have the, you're having, by the way, this, I'm excited about the Samson retreat you have coming up. I think it's, what, the first weekend of November? What are the dates? Yeah, it's coming up uh, November 8th to 11th. It's Hamilton, New Jersey. Uh, it's close to Philadelphia. And, and what this is, this is a he- healing tr- retreat specifically for men. Okay. So we, all of us, because of the pornified, uh, pornified culture, have these wounds, especially wounds of our sexuality. Our sexuality, we're supposed to be gifts to others. But when we don't live that out or experience that way, these go very, very deep. And so it's not just for those who are involved in pornography. There may be those who are struggling with same-sex attraction. They're dealing with various issues that, that go on here. And it's going to be a very small, intimate retreat. Um, it's a very comfortable location, comfort food. So, yes, you will have to go on a diet maybe after the retreat. Um, but really helping to enter into this. Um, also, some outdoor work that goes on here where we want to help men to, to learn how to create their own station of the cross, learn how to carry their cross in a, in an appropriate way, but there's release and healing by just working in the outdoors, working with our own hands. Um, and I know that the last I heard, there's just a limited amount of spots available and there's actually an ability for discounts. If we can get a, if you can get a group there, um, and, uh, you'll want to contact VL promotions at four zero four four two eight nine five five five. Um, again, that's four zero four four two eight nine five 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 to get that special discount. Okay, price. if you don't, if you didn't remember that number, you can go to our uh, bearwasnick dot com uh, YouTube site, and this video will be playing. And it's about, uh, it's going to be about uh, three four, three fourths of the way through this through this interview, where you can find that number. What is it again? The number again? Steve? It's four zero four. Yeah, sure. It's four zero four four two eight. Nine five five five. And the website? The website is vlpromotions.com, and you'll you'll want to go there. That's the area that you're able to get the special pricing for the Samson Retreat itself. To learn more about that specifically is samsonretreat.com. Okay, samsonretreat.com. That's something everybody can remember. Um, and it's 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 going on and it's going on November when again? November eighth. 8th to the 11th. So it's a short period of time in near, Phil- near Philadelphia, um, but I promise it will last a it lifetime. Almost sounds of like almost, it almost right. sounds like almost any man could go because everybody at some point has to deal with this uh, disordered desire and getting things, you know, getting things healed and getting things on track. We're talking with Steve McCorney, the author of uh, Redeemed Vision. You can find his book at Amazon. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak, your adventure guide. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're talking with Steve Picorni about winning uh, the challenge uh, of this invasion into masculinity, uh, that pornography uh, pornography is on a full-on attack to attack men and uh, to marginalize us, to shame us, 
and to keep us from being uh, in, in the fr- forefront of what, what the Lord is doing. And so Steve is providing us. Steve, give me some practical things. If someone is, channel- if someone is listening to this, they're inspired, what, what practical things, what steps, spiritual and otherwise, should they take in the next 14 days? Sure. What I would say, obviously, um, first, you got to believe that you can be free. OK, because many guys are thinking they, that this is this is hopeless will never, never be done there. Um, second, we were talking earlier, talking about beauty, getting educated in beauty and turning into how do they do that? How do they do that? Sure. How do we do this? So a very a very practical way if we want to. And again, one of the presuppositions about pornography, as we mentioned earlier, is that the, the way pornography is presented, that's the only way the body really is supposed to look. And that's our, been our formation and our education. So we need to break that. How do we break that? Well, we look at the opposite of what is pornography. What's the opposite of pornography? The opposite of pornography is genuine beauty where the body is exposed appropriately. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean in the church's tradition especially, but we can see this also in some secular pieces of art um, from especially, I would say, 15, 1600s. Um, the body is exposed appropriately there. Look, for instance, at the Sistine Chapel. Look, for instance, at the beautiful, magnificent um, sculpture of King David, where the body, those images were never Pornified. They were never meant to expose us to lust. They were never designed to arouse lust. What they're designed to do is to reveal the goodness of the human body. And how can we say that the body is good from that? Well, based on the incarnation. If the super spiritual God takes on a body, lives in that body, dies in that body, rises in that body, and is still in that body, then it means we got to pay attention to that. And in this here, one of the ways we're able to use this is to the, the beautiful visions of Maria Lactanes. These are images in the church where, the, where Mary is breastfeeding baby Jesus. There are lots and lots of them. A person can, can Google them. Um, and in this notion, right, and one of the lies that we have been fed is that a woman's breasts are A, only for her husband, and B, for his entertainment. Those are lies, The truth is a woman's breasts obviously are first and foremost for her to reveal her great goodness as a person. And second, second, they are beautiful. But and third, they are life giving. So every time we see a woman, let's be very, very frank here. Right. If every time we see a woman and see her breasts, it should be an immediate call to see her is she has the ability to receive love into her, to conceive life and to bear life that life to, be to the world, both in spiritual and, and or exactly to be fruitful, to be spiritual and or physical motherhood. So in those images, right, if we've been programmed to think that we, we see breasts, it's an automatic mood to lust. We've got to, we know that we've got to change these neural pathways in our brain. How do we do that? These images of Maria Lactanes by using them in our contemplative time to use them in looking like I, I come from the persuasion of the of the east of I, I, I love the Byzantine, Byzantine world. Um, and at this moment, I'm in the process of transferring right from, rights from Roman to Byzantine. And we love iconography, right? And because we believe that in those written icons, that we are able to enter into the divine. These images, some of them are icons of Mary, Mary breastfeeding Jesus, and some of them are artwork, um, we are able to take them because we can have a relationship with Jesus, with his mother, we're able to enter in this and by learning how to see, by taking time in that. I recommend people take this for like 10 minutes and look, really look. It's not going to be something that's disgusting or bad, but something beautiful to be able to see there. And what this begins to do is begins to change the way in which we see the body. And especially Gentlemen, you want to learn how to love a woman? Learn how to love his mother. And a mother's body was not simply an incubator for Jesus, and then we discard her. No, we as Catholics, we uphold her. We don't worship her. We're, we honor her as one who truly gave her flesh over so that others may live. And praying Just the like rosary, Jesus think, does to us, especially in the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. And I think in praying the rosary, uh, you know, if you're doing that sort of contemplative prayer, Use the rosary as the contemplative means uh, while you're doing that. Uh, you know, the thing about it is, the, the, and beauty, I see what you're saying, to retrain the neural pathways. 
But there's also this thing that's, that the, the scripture that says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's a real beauty in truth. There's a real beauty in truth. It just kind of knocks down and exposes the lies of the enemy. And I would encourage people to read Christopher West's book on, you know, actually read all 130 of John Paul II's homilies on the theology of the body. 135. There's, there's a yeah. few that weren't as available, I guess. But yeah, I used to say 135, and then someone said it was yeah, 131. Six of them. Yeah, okay, all right. So at any rate, yeah, read the actual homilies. They're beautiful. Uh, and they, they will challenge you. Some of them are steeped in philosophy and a little bit difficult to read. But read those, and then any of Christopher West's books are, are just so beautiful because he, under, he, he talks about the beauty of desire, uh, that, that, that desire. God, God created desire. He, desi- he created a desire for nuptial union. And the beauty of that, I think so many people think, well, uh, having sex is, is some sort of dirty act, you know, that it, you know, but it's, it's, it's meant by the Lord. You know, the very first commandment was, you shall become one flesh. And so you take John Paul II. Go have sex. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, that wasn't quite it. You know, it was to become one. And so, so, but, so from the sure. beginning, there was, this, there was this pointing to nuptial union and to multiply. So there's a, fruit, a, a, a fruitfulness uh, that can come with that too. And so I would really encourage people to read Christopher West's uh, books on the theology of the body because truth has its own beauty and, and truth can set you free. But there's also these, 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 uh, these certain things that you can take. I call them being prudent. There's, in, there's the internal spiritual work that you're talking about, but there's also just a matter of prudence. Uh, I was met with a young guy this week, and he said on his iPhone, there's no, there's no access to the Internet on his iPhone. And he uses the filtering systems on his computer because it, it's, it's just one step. Re- it, just, it, 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 it requires him to take one extra step not that he's not smart enough to overcome those, but it requires him to take one extra step. The other thing about it is in our church, Holy Name of Jesus, the one I attend while I'm, when I'm in Cocoa Beach, uh, there is a, sex, uh, there is a, a, a sexual addiction <clears throat> group that meets there, I think, every Thursday night where people get together and they challenge each other and they help each other. And if they're in some sort of, if they, if they need prayer to call and ask someone to pray. Um, and, I, and I wonder, well, how does that work? But he, for this one particular person, it's had a dramatic Im- impact on his life, um, the brotherhood, you know, and and you know, so many young men they've they've been they've been caught up in this, and now they want to marry. But what a be- what a betrayal to that woman, and then and then when she finds out, and you've been married a year, talk about an explosion in the marriage. So um, there are these practical things you can do. Can you, including going to the Samson retreat? I think the Samson retreat you're holding. You know, Samson was a man that was gifted by God with tremendous power, but disordered desire made him lose all of his strength you know he got he he, he got into uh, uh you know being in love with uh, a woman that wasn't uh, a, a believer and uh and he ended up losing all of his strength to her and i think that's a, that, that's why the samson uh, the name samson is such a great name for that retreat so going to that retreat um reading christopher west's book uh going uh, matt frad has the covenant eyes uh, app and uh Doing what it needs you need to do to get to reach out to a couple other brothers. Maybe there's something going on in your church. Don't wait for it for it to get better. And then my 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 basic approach, what I challenge men with is if you're spending an hour every day in prayer, um, if you want to increase desire, desire is a good thing. Increase it to the uttermost, to the very, very uttermost. And the only thing that you can desire with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind is God. If you spend an hour in sure. prayer every day, Praying the rosary while you're walking, uh, surfing, bicycling, whatever you're doing, waiting in an elevator. Praying the rosary and then, and then devoting an hour every day to prayer and to truth study, you know, meditating on God's Word. You're going to find yourself being liberated. We're talking with Steve Picorni. And, man, it's no longer an option. Today you begin a new path. You seek out the help. You go to confession. You receive the Eucharist. You go to adoration. You pick up every weapon you can. And you change this desire, this disordered desire, into a beautiful desire for beauty and a beautiful desire for God. And you can find a lot about this in Steve Picorni's book, uh, Redeemed Vision. And where, what, and what's the name of the website if they want to come to the retreat, Steve? Yeah, well, the, the website is 
They're going to it's Samson. It's SamsonRetreat.com. And if they're okay. looking at the retreat they're, for special pricing, uh, it's 404-428-9555. They'll never remember that. But the SamsonRetreat.com. And then your, <laughs> and your website is what? Yeah. The one to do. Yeah, and, and my website, especially for those who are looking for one-on-one mentoring, how do we break this this power forever? Uh, it's freedom-coaching.net. Freedom-coaching.net. Okay, everybody, we're going to invite you to go to our website one more time. We'd love for you to subscribe to our newsletters. If you do, you get the radio show sent to you uh, the, before it even airs in a way that you can share it with all your friends and families and brothers, sons, uh, brother-in-laws. And uh, don't forget, Long Ride Home is available on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. So you can share you can share it with your friends and you can power watch it over the weekend with your sons. And go, so go to, our, go to our website or go to iTunes and watch Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. We love you guys. We'll talk to you next week. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. <laughs> You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.